Hey everyone, it's Zach here. Today I'm going to walk through installing HashiCorp Vault with Ansible. This could be useful for a few reasons. One, just playing around with HashiCorp Vault and getting used to a secrets manager uh, by leveraging the community version. I have to pay anything and get it spun up really quickly. I use this a lot for demos to show the integration between Ansible Automation Platform and HashiCorp Vault, as well as it's a good parallel to really any secrets management tool that you might want to use. So let's go ahead and just dive into what it looks like to, to get the installation going. So in the blog post, I've got some target host specs here. Uh, I'm going to be running this on RHEL 9.2. Uh, the guide that I've linked to in the playbook has support for other operating systems as well. The, I'm using four CPUs, eight gigs of memory, and 32 gigs of disk size uh, on a VM in Proxmox. So just to prove it, uh, this is my Proxmox environment. You can see here, this is my Vault VM that I'm gonna be running it against. And now I will dive into the playbook just to walk through some of the steps that I've outlined in the blog post itself, but in more detail. So at the top here, if you wanna see the guide that I used, uh, this is a link to HashiCorp's developer documentation, which is really exactly what I followed to build out this playbook. I've got a host here, Vault, that I'm going to run it against. So you'll want to make sure that you have an entry in your inventory called Vault that points to maybe an IP address in your network. Or you can obviously come in here and change this host tag to run against you know, the target host of your choice. There's some variables here that are going to be important for this installation. And you'll, you'll see when we get into the job template that I try to marry these up with a survey to make things easy for someone to, to use an Ansible automation platform. For the purposes of this demo, the vault FQDN is going to be vault.autodesk.com. So this is going to be in my domain. I'm using port 2083 as my SSH or SSL port. That's because I use Cloudflare as a DNS and they only support specific HTTPS ports, many of which I've already used. So 2083 is what we're going with today, but you can obviously override that in your installation. Then specify a storage path. I'm going to be using local file storage. So I gave it opt vault data which the playbook will actually create that directory for me. And then TLS related details, obviously recommend using TLS. You can turn TLS off and this, ins this playbook will still work. You'll just have to connect to it via HTTP. I don't do the certificate creation. What I will do in this playbook is ex set up the config file for vault to look for a certificate and key in a particular location. So in my case, I use Let's Encrypt to create these certificates for vault.autodos.com, and I've already placed them on the server. So what you're seeing here for these parameters is just going to be used to populate the config file so it knows where to look when it starts up the vault service. Then I've got a no log variable here, which is just useful for you know, debugging versus not debugging. When I'm debugging, I may want to see some of the logs as I'm getting through the playbook. When I'm not debugging, I don't want to be writing secure information out to the terminal or to you know, a job template log in AP. The last variable is the vault address, which you shouldn't have to change. It's really a combination of the variables above, and it's going to be used to set an environment variable when we're running some of the vault operations on the server, which is accept, expected to get some of the information back that we will need. So let's dive into some of the tasks. The first thing we're going to do is really just set up our box. We're going to install yum utils. Then we're going to create a new YUM repository to point at HashiCorp stable. Nothing crazy there. We're then going to use DNF to install Vault. So that's a pretty simple step. We're going to create the storage directory. So again, that's that opt Vault data. It's going to make sure it's created and the built-in file plugin will go ahead and create the full path if it doesn't exist. So it's thinking make directory dash P, if you've done that before on the command line, the file module will work that same way. The next step we're going to do is we're going to template the vault config. So here is a really powerful use of Jenda templates. I'm going to take a template in this directory and I'm going to place it at etsy vault.d vault.hcl, which is where the vault service is going to look for it. So while we're talking about that, let me hop over and give a quick look at what does the template look like itself. So you'll, you'll see this file if you've looked at HashiCorp's documentation. All I did was added a little bit of Jinja logic to it. So for the most part, I left it the same, but you'll notice I variableized the path. That way you can change the path if desired, or you can use OptiVault data. I have added some conditions here to basically set up HTTP or HTTPS based off of your desired config. If we have Vault TLS enabled, 
it's going to set up our HTTPS listener down here and it's going to give us an address with our based on our vault port and it will also point to that cert file and key file. If we don't enable HTTPS, we'll have our address and we'll just have the TLS disable flag set to one and we won't have to point to you know, our certificate files, of course. So let's hop back over to the playbook. We'll scroll down. Now that we've templated out our vault config, we're ready to start the vault service. We'll go ahead and start it. Um, I have the state here to restart it in case you rerun this playbook. Um, but in this case, we're gonna start it and enable it so that when the server reboots, it automatically starts back up. We're gonna set up a firewall rule. So I'll open up the port that we've specified um, over TCP and I will open it up permanently and enable that as well. And then we'll go ahead and now we're getting into some of the actual vault steps. So when you first install vault, you do have to init, initialize it. And there's a CLI that's installed with the vault package called vault. Um, and then there's some operator functions that we're gonna use. So the first one here is that operator init. And we're gonna specify format JSON and then register that output that allows us to use some of that information later on down the line. Specifically, we're going to save it. So we're going to have some vault init data. Um, we'll get that nice JSON format from the from JSON plugin, which will parse the output from this command. And we're going to write it to a file. This is going to be important because this file is going to contain your unseal keys as well as your root token, which is useful for logging in, especially when you're just doing some testing um, and then also to unseal the vault itself. Now this playbook will actually go ahead and do the unseal operation for you. So what it's gonna do is that a vault init data is gonna have an array of unseal keys. And we're just gonna take, you, you only need to use three of them. Um, I believe there's five total. We're just gonna take the first three and we'll go through and run the vault operator unseal command with each three. And by the end of it, at the very end here where we do the vault status, we should see in our output that the vault is no longer sealed. Um, and the last thing we do is we just take the output from that vault status and debug it, uh, which is useful um, just to see kind of what happened during the run and where we're at. So now, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop over to AP, and I'm going to search for my vault template. I'm going to go ahead and run the installation. I've got a survey here just to make it easier for someone using it. Uh, I'm not going to change anything here, but I've got my FQDN, my port, and then I'm going to use TLS. Let's go ahead and actually turn off secure logging. Uh, wouldn't want to do this in production, but just so we can get some good output from the playbook run um, and we can take a look at what does that init data look like and how can I use it once my vault installation is ready to go. So that playbook didn't take too long, uh, only about 22 seconds to get our vault installation going. If I scroll down here, what I wanna focus on is our vault init and our vault init data. So let me click on this output. So if we had set no log to true, we wouldn't be able to see this, which would be ideal in a, a more secure setting. But in this case, it's okay. We've got our unsealed keys. And then if I scroll down again, we'll have our root token. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this because I'm gonna use it in a moment to actually I'm going to use control C. I'm going to use it in a moment to log into the UI. If you have secure logging on, that's the purpose of the save vault, save vault data step is so that um, as an admin, you can actually go to this vault machine. And if I ls on ops vault data, we should see that I have my init data.json and I can, you know, cat that file just to make sure I have access to my root token, which again may be useful to you in the future. And don't try to steal this token. This, this vault is ephemeral. It's not going to be alive after this video. Um, but that's how you can grab, grab that token even if you have secure logging off. So let's go back over to the browser and I'm now just going to navigate to my vault instance. So now that we're logged or we're at our vault instance and we want to use that root token to go ahead and log in. So I'll come back here since I didn't have secure logging on and I, let's see, I actually copied it. Let's see if it's saved correctly. Go ahead and click sign in and boom. So now we're logged in as root and here we can start working with vault. We can use create additional secrets engines. 
uh, which I won't go into detail in this blog post, um, or we can add secrets to our default uh, cubbyhole secret engine by just creating some secrets, giving it a key, um, and then putting some data in there. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you get up and running quickly. And in a subsequent video, I'm gonna talk about the integration between AAP and HashiCorp Vault, where I'll actually be pulling secrets per host. So take a look for that to come out um, and go ahead and get your vault up and running though. Thanks for watching.